All right, this is our first official lesson. Thanks for bearing with me as I figure this technology thing out. So this is solving simple equations, one-step equations. Our essential question is, how do I solve one-step equations using addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division? So we're going to use inverse properties to do this. As my phone goes off. There we go. Um, by inverse properties, I mean that you can use addition or subtraction to zero something out for a constant, all right? Just for constants. So if you have negative two, you can use adding two to get zero. Or positive three, you can subtract three or add a negative three to get zero. Or even if you have fractions, like one third, um, to zero that out, you would subtract one third and you get a zero, right? So that's what we're gonna do. I've drawn this nice red line down both sides um, so we can see whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. I know we've seen this before, um, so I just want you aware, reminding ourselves that we know at least a little bit we've seen how to do this. So we're going to solve each equation, and then we're going to check it. So I am starting with x. In fact, there is one x there. He is a ninja number one. You don't have to include him, but it helps my brain. So we've got 1x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. I want to get x all by itself. I need to zero out this negative 3. Well, the opposite of negative 3 is plus 3. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So then I am left with 1x is equal to negative 2. So that means I know that x equals negative 2. That is my answer. To check, I am going to plug in negative 2 where I see x. So I'm going to give x a hug and substitute in negative 2. So then I have to say, well, negative 2 minus 3 equals negative 5. Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5, and it equals negative 5. Yes, that's true. It checks. It needs to have the same number equal to the same number, all right? That's how you do a check. Um, the question that I'm going to ask you is, can my 2-year-old see that it's the same, or my 4-year-old see that it's the same number? My 4-year-old actually knows his numbers very well. He would recognize that those are 5s. So he could see it's the same. So when we do a check, we want to make sure that it's down to one number equals one number. Not up here, but down here. Let's do another one together. We've got 0 0.9 equals y plus 2.8. Um, you do not have to have the variable on the left side. It's fine like this. If you really want to reverse it, I'm not going to hold you back. But it's fine like this. So I want to get the y by itself. We have plus 2.8. So the opposite of Adding is subtracting 2.8. I need to subtract 2.8 from both sides. We have a positive 0.9 minus 2.8. That means I'm going to get a negative 1.9 is equal to y. Again, if this bugs you, you can always reverse it and have y equals negative 1.9. Let's do our check. So we have 0 0.9 is equal to negative 1.9 plus 2.8. We have 0 0.9 is equal to negative 1.9 plus 2.8 gets us 0 0.9. My four-year-old can see that those are the same number, even if he doesn't understand decimals yet. The last one that we're going to look at for these example problems is to solve the equation P as a literal equation. All right, Literal equations have um, no constants. They have only variables. So this is a literal equation. Sorry, I get a little tongue-tied with those sometimes. So we want p to be by itself. Well, we have a plus z here. The opposite of adding is subtracting. So I minus z. Plus z minus z, it's gone, right? I add to subtract to zero. So z is now gone from the side. But whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I subtract z from the other side. So now we have p all by itself plus 0 I'll put on there because that zeroed out. And on our left side here, we have y minus z. So y minus z. If you really don't like p by on the right, that's fine. So we can have p equals y minus z. Good news is you can't check for a literal equation. So for this literal equation, we're just going to leave it as it is. Now let's try some word problems. Everyone's favorite. 
So our first word problem. On a January 22nd, 1943, the temperature in Spearfish, South Dakota, just north of where my grandfather's from, fell from 54 degrees at 9 a.m. to negative 4 degrees at 9.27 a.m. How many degrees did the temperature fall? Well, to do this, we need um, that our starting temperature plus the change in temperature is going to equal our final temperature. So our starting temperature, it said, was 54 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't need to care about the time, right? It's not asking us for a rate or anything. Um, and then our change in temperature, we don't know. So that's our question mark or our variable. And then our final temperature is negative 4 degrees. Um, I am feeling uncreative, so I'm going to put in x here. So we have 54 plus x is equal to negative 4. So that is our equation that we're going to use to solve this. I want to figure out my change in temperature. I want to get x by itself. I have a 54 here, but what kind of a 54 is it? It should be a positive, right? If there's nothing written here, then it's a positive. The opposite of a positive is a negative. So I need to subtract 54 on both sides. So I end up with an x, negative 4 minus 54 is equal to negative 58. So then, because it's a word problem, we need a sentence. So the change in temperature was negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. There we go. The last one is also a word problem. You thought the balance in your checking account was $68. When your bank statement arrives, you realize that you forgot to record a check. It happens to me sometimes. The bank statement lists your actual balance as $26. So write and solve an equation to find the amount of the check that you forgot to record. So our actual balance we know is $26. We don't know how much the check was that we forgot. I'm going to use C for a forgotten check. And we thought the balance was 68. So I need to figure out how much um, the check was that I forgot. So I am going to actually add C on both sides. And the reason for that is because I have a negative C here, right? I don't want to deal with negative numbers. I want to keep it positive, even in all the chaos. So we have 68 left on our left side, plus 0, minus C, plus C, zeros out. And then we have 26 plus C on our right. This is a positive 26. The opposite of a positive is negative. So minus 26 on both sides. So that means we've got 68 plus 0, which is still 68, minus 26. We end up with a C is equal to 42. It's an expensive check. So, to finish off my answer, I would say the check I forgot was $42. There we go. Um, we're going to get to the other half of lesson one when we look at multiplying and dividing in the next video. For now, though, you should have a big ideas assignment. So, let me know if you have questions. Email me. Let me know how I can help.